Listeners everywhere, welcome to The Movie Show with Joel and Ryan, the weekly fix for your screen addiction and a trusted source for discussion of all things film and television. Please keep in mind that for the purposes of this podcast, Joel and Ryan are not acting as journalists, but rather fellow moving picture enthusiasts. All of their opinions should be taken as such. Also, please be warned that while Joel and Ryan may seem like petulant children, they are, in fact, adults who may occasionally use adult language. While they promise to keep out all the worst words, it's a good bet you will still understand what they were saying. And now, with no further ado, here's Joel and Ryan. I'm Joel and I'm Ryan and we got old school original original recipe show tonight uh today tonight <laughs> apparently might, I'm might be apparently nice I them. have aspirations that this is somehow going to be a nighttime show for us welcome remember those we used to do those you'd come over and it was daylight oh, yeah. out and when we were done blah 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 it'd be nighttime and you'd have to drive home yep those were the days um back welcome when people came to visit me yep back when we felt like our breath was not going to kill each other um, uh, but uh but no hey if it weren't for that we wouldn't have you wouldn't get to see our pretty faces if you subscribe to the youtube channel that's true and all those um, special guests that we've had they've transformed that's the show true. somewhat that's but true. Joel's correct. Today it's just him and me and you, and that's just how it's got to be. And and we thank you for letting us into your ear holes. And uh, today, yeah, today is just going to be. Um, today is your. It, it, we are a couple of rambling, rambling guys. We're okay. going to be rambling in your ears about uh, a few topics that um, just came up. Nothing super specific. We're not doing double features. We're not doing a deep dive. We're not. Uh, we are. Oh. We are going to real quick do a, a, a sort of deep dive. In fact, Joel, if you have it handy, do you have the deep dive thing there ready? Sure, yeah. We're going to do a deep dive on the, since it's Friday the 13th, on the Friday the 13th movies. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, hold on. Here we go. Um, all right, and here we go. And now, it's spooky Friday the 13th. Uh, here we go, deep dive. They all suck. All right, great. Um, and now we uh, moving on. Uh, we want to talk. Uh, let's give a quick shout out to uh, uh, Fred Ward, who oh, yeah. um, who passed away uh, at the Fred... end of my cheesy joke, where you had to sit through the deep dive theme. Are you kidding? But me? just to elaborate, just a touch further, Joel, before we move yeah, okay. on to Freddie. Yeah, there are no good Friday the Thirteenth movies. I know you've heard me say it here before, but. Yeah. And people who sit around and talk about which one's better, which oh, they only can be talked mm-hmm. about relative to each other. Anyone decent who's ever been involved in one should be ashamed of themselves. And anyone who's known primarily for being involved in them can be completely artistically dismissed forevermore. Mm-hmm. They're crap. And unless, and, and if you uh, are one of those people that, um, uh, you know, I know our, our podcast is huge in Hollywood um and uh if so if you are someone that has been uh involved in those uh films um fret not though we do not care for them you will always have michael klug frequent guest of this show uh and he will always he will have enough love for you for for all of us um so um so yeah so but it won't change the fact that you were afraid the 13th movie and you're terrible you're 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 not good you're not good. Um, and that's, you know, there have, there have been some okay things come through that series, but right. I mean, terrible. Just, it's just it, people lump it in with like the Halloween movies, the Halloween movies also as a franchise, terrible, 
Mm -hmm. but Halloween, first of all, was really good. It, it helps that you started with a decent movie that was mm -hmm. more than just barely competently made. And, you know, so you had a little something to build off of. That series, while distasteful in how long and absurd and crappy it is, still has highlights and things where you can say, well, here's some art, art something resembling artistic merit. You right. flat can't do that with the Friday the 13th movies. They are almost uniquely terrible every single one of them right and if someone ever comes up to you and says well look i have documents um that that prove that the friday the 13th movies are terrific let me just get my file you respond with it is not in the file it's not. <laughs> um all right on that note <laughs> so fred ward, uh, fred, uh, ward man. fred ward was uh in, in one of the you know he was we if i knew he was coming i would have done the friday the 13th thing afterwards you know? i know i well i i saw you go with it i saw it happen um in your uh, i didn't your give brain. you any warning no nope, and you i know, went with it and i love it sometimes uh, tonally we're just not right and, and that's well in this moments. show the, the i think today's show uh you know we're I think that this is going to be a little bit more of, you know what, this is actually probably going to be a pretty good representation of what life is like with you and me when when we do hang out. It's pretty scattered, pretty random. We jump around. Because we don't around. do deep dives and we don't follow an outline and we yeah. haven't really researched at a time. So you're right. It yeah. Will be more so like this that. is a little Maybe bit more. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. The Could be. podcast verite. But, um but fred ward did just die and he's fantastic it was really fantastic actor joel you had something you wanted to say yeah i mean i was just gonna say we mentioned him last week uh in big business uh you know he he's in that uh, he plays sort of the he's the country heartthrob of that yeah. movie and um you know and he brings fred ward always brought you know he always brought uh, a, a groundedness to everything that he did um you know I, I my personal favorite of course like many is the right stuff um he's uh he's tremendous in that um well and the right stuff's emblematic of the kind of work that he does he's so he really puts concerns i mean because he's had a lot of heroic roles and a lot of romantic leads he's really done all the work of a leading man and a character actor throughout his career, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Most, most people don't get to straddle that line quite so easily as he did. Right. But, the, but, but the, you know, but the, like, like, I'll just say like Remo Williams. Remo Williams, the adventure the, begins. The adventure is truly dead now. That's really yep. sad. I always kind of in the back of my head, it said the adventure begins. We got a shot. Maybe we'll get more Remo Williams. Right. We'll certainly get more Remo Williams in our uh, next HBO. Uh, I saw it on HBO episode. Oh, yeah. Um, but just to show that he could be the an action hero, you know, that had that could crack a smart ass line and could be full of confidence. But what he was really great at, and I, like I said, getting back to what you said, right stuff, obviously, is is leaving a certain sense of, I mean, he, and I always love this about guys who could do this and women in particular, actually. And I always kind of talk about it, but he could in that same way, like Susan Sarandon was really good at this and some other actors, he could leave that mo the movie star ego and the dignity at the door when he was working on a project. And so he, he could really wear his without, indicating all the time which he really didn't do he could share with you the the, the sort of short-sighted dumb all the little you know typically bad characteristics we think of a character that nevertheless make them come to life in a real human way uh he's fantastic and his whole little kind of featured chapter in the right stuff is so fantastic because we we it the film warns us that this is coming and yet when we go through with it we still feel yeah such sympathy for, what, for what's yeah, he, happening. yeah and who's he traveled that road with in that movie right veronica cartwright another one it was just is fantastic at that kind of thing and so i love him for that you know he's got this line he plays a dude in thunderheart he's got this line the 
the the the act the Native American activism group is called Arm, Aboriginal Rights, and he just plays this jerk, and he his line is. Yeah, the arm's gonna be the broken arm. And it sounds so stupid. Like he couldn't, he has to make that live in reality in this scene, but he yeah. just makes sure that you know how stupid this guy is and how we can now sort of, cause it's a very small part in that film where we can now dismiss him and everything he has to say going forward. It's delightful. Like yeah. we talked about he, that when we had J.O. Sanders on the show, man. Make the most of those moments. It's and and at least people like us will remember you forever. Because... Absolutely. And yeah, he had that great. I, I I love what you just said and how he was able to straddle the line of like the character guy and uh, and leading man guy. And um, you know, he he just had uh an everyman quality to him. Um I, he he always just seemed like um yeah he he set aside that ego of you know oh i'm gonna act you know of that the the prototypical artiste actor well you just but you want to but he seemed he felt like a wanna... craftsman he felt like somebody yeah. like no no this is my craft i do it i do it well i take it seriously i'm gonna bring it um, and i don't no matter i don't what care the if i is. come off a little silly or i don't care if yeah. i come off a little despicable like it, it whatever whatever and it, it always worked with him because he, the humanity, even in the worst people he played, he played a handful of villains that were kind of mm -hmm. terrible. Um, the, the humanness of them was never lost. And so there was always this reality to it that was always really, really powerful. You know, it's not that it's not that you have to be undignified as an actor, but a lot of actors, you know, you'd see their performance and they're not bad actors some really, really good ones just mm -hmm. have a tough time not being cool on screen. Right. Because that, <laughs> because that's sort of what they're hired for. And that's, you know what I mean? So that's what they bring to the party. And then the focus is all kind of on nailing mm -hmm. that aspect of it. And he just, he couldn't help but dig deeper in every performance. And it, it was a treasure. I mean, it was just really, really fantastic actor, I think. Mm -hmm. Fred Ward, your adventure is now over, and we salute you. Yeah, for real, man. You will um, be missed. You, 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 you know, you had more in you, but we're grateful for what you put down on celluloid, mm -hmm. no doubt. Um. So today, yeah. So today, the first, uh, the first, well, the first topic that was in our uh, exchange, we've already had. Uh, it, where this is topic number three already for the wow. show. Um. But uh, one of the things that you brought up is is why we are always looking back on the movie show uh, on uh, looking back on our on our show. We talk about we talk about film history. You're not you're not tuning into the movie show with Joel and Ryan for breaking entertainment news. Well, you, uh, we you've probably we, seen either on the YouTube page or at Podbean or Apple Podcasts mm -hmm. or wherever you join us that this show is called. This very pretentious title, The Future of Cinema. Yeah, The Future. <laughs> so, so you maybe tuned in thinking, hmm, I'm going to get some wisdom on the future of cinema from the guys <laughs> who like never talk about the future of cinema and only talk about things from 30 years ago. Right. Um, so it's a legit question. Why, why, why should we care what you think about this stuff? Or... And why do you do that? We talk about it from time to time. I mean, we touch on it. I don't know yeah. that we've ever truly discussed it. Um, we're we're historians more than we're critics, and we're certainly pop culture historians more than we're pop culture guys who are in the now. Yeah. And, you know, you're not going to get the latest on the the Johnny Depp trial or the, you, this kind of thing. Right. It's, it's obviously, that's never going to cross our lips. Mm -hmm. Joel brought up some perfectly legit things we should be talking about on this show. And both of them, I was like, no, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, because... one of them was not, we did not discuss pooping in a bed. Uh, no, but no. no. Uh, we did not, but... Yeah. We did not, but I just like that's not in the file at all for this show because <laughs> partly because we want to keep things positive, but and and partly there's there's an ease to talking about stuff. Even last week in the chaos of the four of us bringing these unrelated double features 
to the party they, there's a uh, we have all this perspective you know what i mean you mm-hmm. can see what happens when you've lived with a, in that episode's a great example where you can see what happens when you've lived with a thing and it becomes a friend to you and its flaws aren't important to you because you love this thing about it right right that's right. the only reason i have any friends typically um it's because of that whatever that is inside of us that is willing to do that um and then you see where where you drop that same old friend on somebody else who's never seen it and they are reacting to it like it's a thing with you know in their current state and they're with their current wisdom and and everything else and their current another real big factor i think is their current uh impatience with sort of having to watch things having to be assigned things and uh i've eschewed all that i haven't seen i haven't seen the big things i do see them but i just kind of do it in my own time because the worst thing you can do is be like oh i gotta go i gotta go see dr strange because everybody's talking about it and we have to talk about it i think you'd get a really rotten version of me if i did that just for this purpose right so part of it is we talk about we want to talk about things that we're are positive about Mm-hmm. And that positivity over time, I think, grows. If you're the type of person who who is willing to watch movies again and again and again, it, some people's like, "Oh, I know how that movie ends. Why would I watch that again?" Yeah, yep. That's a fair way to go through life. You're not alone. That our show is probably not ideally suited towards someone who that's their sort of audience type. But it, right, if you're still here, rah. And then there's just the ease with which you can talk about things that have already happened and have perspective. You know, you, you when something comes out, I mean, I don't remember the only one time do I remember a Star Wars movie coming out and the next day everybody hated it. And that was uh, um, Last Jedi. That truly, like, its reputation just hit bam splat on the very next day and of course not everybody agreed with it but nevertheless the conventional wisdom the public discourse about it was established pretty much immediately you know when phantom menace which everybody hated some people just hated with all their black hearts for years and years and years when that first came on the reviews were positive everybody was sort of bouncing off the walls new star Mm -hmm. wars and stuff there were things we thought were annoying but i don't i don't think anyone were like well that you know uh, that's a deal breaker the way the way these like snarky videos and stuff that came along later but it's hard to criticize those because they did come along later i mean they came along with reflection (laughs) you know so they they didn't just jump right out of the cultural experience of seeing the first new star wars movie in 20 years or 17 years or whatever it was at the time which most of us were willing to forgive any flaws it might have because Mm -hmm. we just wanted to we wanted to hear that music again and see that light show again and i mean the the film Mm -hmm. uh for better or worse maybe worse but it does provide those things we wanted our lightsabers yeah and uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't uh, want we didn't want every thing to be little physical comedy bits and stuff. And that that I think when you revisit them, that stuff really takes its toll on your tolerance for it. You know, mm-hmm. even when they yeah, we don't get into Phantom Menace. Sorry, <laughs> the future of cinema. We can rip on Phantom Menace mm-hmm. later. That could, that's its own show. Right. Um, but, but we are. Yeah, my point is we 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 have perspective these yeah. things have existed a little bit in history we i think we're better off talking about things that's not to say that's the only thing we'll ever talk about that's not true but we're better off with a little distance from the things so that we can organize our thoughts and not just have that oh my god because i think you really do react you you're either really elated or you're really disappointed I think you kind of can't react any other way to something that you look forward to and that you go out to see. And right. you need a little time to come back and say, oh, no, nope, that's a five and a half out of 10 star movie. You know, it's not very mm-hmm. good, but it's not complete crap. It's not complete crap. Yeah. yeah um, so no, I agree. Uh, that I mean, that's why that's why Siskel and Ebert with the thumbs up, thumbs down. 
Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, that is, that is like a perfect model for your, for if, if you just are like, oh my God, I'm so excited to this movie that just came out. Is it great? Is it, or is it, you know, am I going to, am I going to be a lot, am I going to love it or am I going to hate it? And that's literally their reaction. Then you go and you read their reviews where they've taken the time and put things in, you know, had thoughts and, uh, and, um, you know, organize things a little bit, then, you know, sometimes there'll be like a movie that they get that one of that Ebert gave a thumbs down on is actually like a, he'll give it like a five out of 10 or something like that. And, and it's like, Oh, well, no, it had, it had some good things. It just was a, in that moment, it was a thumbs down. Um, I think that we, uh, you know, you and I uh, and the, our friends who uh, are, we're fortunate enough to have come join us when we have guests on the show you know we're also we're also people who we watch these movies we watch movies more than once and we willingly let them affect us and inform us as to who we are um uh, you know we we internalize these movies uh in a lot of ways um that that you know that that some people just can take it as an entertainment and uh, take movies as an entertainment or TV shows as entertainment and just be like, yep, that was great. That was fun. I'm going to move on with my life. Uh, we tend to, especially when we watch things uh, over and over, we we let them, they, they inform a little bit about who we are as people and inform how we view others, inform how we view um, our, uh, you know, our, our sometimes our, sometimes it can even affect our worldview. And that's uh, and to, and that that to to me that's one of the reasons why I like I've always liked engaging you in conversation is because we 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 can talk about we can get into the minutia of a thing but we can also talk about things in a very large umbrella and a very uh, big macro scope so um, yeah well we uh, and we've done preview episodes in the past but we're we're not a very good hype show I would yeah. Say. I, well, yeah, I mean, we, we do very, that. I think I'm very cynical. This is just kind of leads us to our next thing. But I think I'm very cynical about, uh, uh, we'll see. I'm just kind of like, well, yeah, well let's okay. get into it. Let's get into <laughs> it. The next thing we're going to talk about is some of the things that we that, that we have coming up. Um, uh, coming up in a few weeks, we have the six episode um, uh, special event on Disney Plus uh, of Obi-Wan. Um, Ewan McGregor is back as Obi-Wan Kenobi. We even have, uh, um, oh my God, uh, Hayden, Hayden Christensen, Christensen. Um, back as uh, as um, Anakin, uh, me, Darth Vader. Um, and that will be interesting. We're gonna, obviously going to get a whole new slew of, of characters. Um, some, some really good it's looking... Interesting good looking baddies Place to see darth um, vader i mean we may really get something like we've never had before with him in yeah. this maybe not but i mean there's some promise of that you know what was jesus like as a teenager you know what i mean that's, right that's it just sort of answers that kind of this there's no record of this at all you know right. even the prequels and uh, not really so much the sequels but even the prequels like a lot of that stuff we had leaked out if you back in the day if you asked george Lucas a question he would tell you well, mm -hmm. what's the deal with Boba Fett and I remember this in 1980 before or 1979 before he'd even appeared in Empire Strikes Back either he had an action figure out because yeah, he was yeah. in the he was in a cartoon in the Christmas specials so this is a, a guy that he had thought about already before we even really got to know him which we really never did but he's like oh well he's sort of used to be uh stormtrooper it's kind of complicated but you know you kind of find out like he just told you all this stuff yeah and i'm so i'm always like so he's like some rogue stormtrooper it turns out no he was the he was the, the template he was a clone, the clone like all yeah. the same stormtroopers but he was one who was raised and taught in a different completely different setting and that's what made him mm -hmm. who he was he didn't go into all that but it that shit really did appear in the thing so i'm a excited for obi-wan to the degree that i that i can be because i you know i like it, it doesn't have an adult rating either it has like a, almost a kid's rating 
which yeah. is unique for a story like that that lo looks like it's going to be substantive and have you know a certain degree of action in it um right you, you guys I, I, matter of fact i don't think people have seen pg rated live action films in general very often it's really rare that they come around correct and if they which, and if they are they're so saccharine yeah, it, um, that, yeah that you're like oh this really doesn't have anything even vaguely objectionable in it the pg yeah. rating is reserved for what used to be a live action g rating right. back in the day and that's just a very uncommon thing so this movie has that somehow which i'm that's almost more fascinating than anything because <laughs> it's it it can't get that dark if it's gonna be right. that kind of thing which is fascinating to me. So, you know, so I watched the Obi-Wan trailer and I've heard the John Williams Obi-Wan theme. He took a couple of weeks off between projects he's involved in and wrote this little theme and, and bravo to the, I can't remember her name, but bravo to the composer who's hired for that series to welcome that and then to be willing to sort of build off of that themselves. Like, right. well, that's very cool because composers have their egos too, believe me. Sure. <laughs> it's, and sure. It's, it, it, you know, so it, you know, so them saying, "Oh, it's, it's like a John Williams thing now," and now you're just the person who adapted. Like, she's a pretty accomplished a film composer, and so to be willing to go that way with it is very cool. And mm -hmm. yet, and so then we get a little bit of both, the old and the new, which is neat. So I'm not, hey Joel, I'm not super cynical about Obi Wan. What do you think? Um, well, I mean, I'm very excited about. Um... I'm very excited for for Obi Wan. You know, this is this is my jam. I I love stuff like this. Um, I'm um, I, I wanted to just quick look up the music. Uh, Natalie Holt is the mm -hmm. uh, composer for the series. Yeah, thanks who, for that. Because uh, I read a neat little interview mm -hmm. with her, and she's uh, she's got it together. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I am I'm I'm excited uh, for it. It, um, it's you know it's intriguing the last time we saw Darth Vader was uh, at the well I mean so at the end of episode three is him going no which is one of is a great meme now and then we saw him um, yeah we saw him in uh, uh, in Rogue One a little bit you know they kind of uh, embellished I guess let's maybe is I don't know if that's quite the right word but the that opening uh the, yeah, we the, saw him we saw him rocking a dad joke yeah <laughs> Rogue One. how dare you how dare you have Darth Vader give some dude a pun at the end of his scene <laughs> yep. bad uh, on whoever wrote that by the way. I, don't, I don't wanna it was a com written by the committee as they say in the Star Wars universe so I don't want yep. But uh, whoever uh, did that, mm, boo. Yep. Uh, that said, his the force of what it means when Vader's hunting you down at the end of the movie was very, very powerful. And it's right. hard to argue that that, hard to argue that is skewing 20 minutes of combat on the beach for that wasn't probably a great choice that enhances that story greatly. But um, so, yeah, so I, I think that there is the potential to do something uh, really intriguing um and uh you know the the everyone who is you know uh uh what's his face um um oh my gosh uh the guy who's kind of in in charge of all of this uh i mean um was a full uh, i want to say dave um oh yeah with an I f find, yeah f i want to say feloni but i don't think that's right uh, oh my god that, why can't though. i cannot think of it and of course can't you just be like one of the first names here imdb no of course you can't no it um, wouldn't be for him even though he's beloved amongst fandom I, you wouldn't find yeah him. i mean he's kind of been given the reins mandalorian dave f and he would have popped right up yeah here we go mandalorian <laughs> dave f uh dave filoni it was dave filoni hey uh, you got yeah, it so right. he's been so he's been kind of, you know, he's been given the reins to, uh, yeah, meanwhile, like our, our, a couple of our listeners probably screaming, going, gee, it's Dave Filoni, just say it. Um, move on. Uh, Dave Filoni, uh, you know, kind of given the reins to, he, you know, to, to kind of run this extended, expanded universe of Star Wars um, and make sense of it all. And he's done a very good job of sort of keeping tonally 
things uh uh kind of it, it yeah he, he's he, he i mean he did a really good job with mandalorian and scaling it way back and keeping it really really simple and yet ma- making sure he was creating something that was mm-hmm. really entertaining in in all the base ways that you would want you know to get the wit back in the thing without all the barrage of nonsense like he just Mm -hmm. hated things down that's what i really like about mandalorian anyway there's a couple episodes of mandalorian where you could literally like you could not hear what people are saying and you can follow it kind of perfectly because it's just this great visual storytelling that has this very simple things about i don't you know there's complex characters and some tough choices in it so i don't want to say that gets overly simplified but it really is a simplified thing and then i think the boba fett show was tougher because Mandalorian really is the Boba Fett show. I, I felt like what, that was weird that those were their it, first two shows. Right. It's a guy in a Boba Fett suit. It's not Boba Fett. You've solved the how do we do a show about Boba Fett problem, basically, right. in an ingenious way. And then for your next thing to be, oh, here's a Boba Fett suit where it is Boba Fett and the Boba Fett suit felt anticlimactic, to say mm-hmm. the least, in comparison. It suffers, but it's not crap. It just suffers by comparison. And, yeah. and this, but this will be different. Because this is a really important character in a really important position of lore, you know what I mean? It'll be there. Be it, it's a it's a uh, you know it's an adult and a philosopher that's a force user in the story. It will not be able to have that easy charm and he, although I'm sure it'll have plenty of humor, it won't be mm-hmm. it won't be able to fall back on those things the way Mandalorian does. And that means that that's the challenge of the thing. So I'm excited. And the yeah. fact that it's more family friendly than any Star Wars thing we've had in ages just seems crazy to me, but I'm very excited about that. Right. Just right. because, wow, that's different. I mean, that really, it may seem like a small thing, but it really is different. No, These I, things I, have gotten darker and darker kind of as they've gone on. And this right. is and I think that, doing that. And it seems like that was, you know, and it was a very conscious choice. That was something that uh, you get the, that Ewan McGregor, you know, that was something that was very important to him that um, he sort of maintained. Yeah, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a ton of Star Wars properties in the pipeline, um, and yeah. and and so it is. Yeah, I mean, this this universe, uh, the Star Wars universe, is. Um, is immense and not everything is gonna is gonna hit uh but it you know this one um but obi-wan in exile like it, it, when they just said that from the get-go uh, when they when they just which said these are some of the things we're going to be working on i mean that just uh, it ex- i mean some people are like tattooing mm-hmm. again i mean i get it but but yeah I, but no I for sure it. i'm ex- it's, really excited yeah i'm i'm with and i now that i share his hairstyle i'm with john williams you know, I oh, you're doing what? I'll uh, if you want me to be a little bit a part of that, I'll s- set aside a little yep. time for you. You know, yep. that I'm willing to do because you know I know that guy, and I never really wrote him a thing, and I kind of like to try if you don't mind. Right. And of course, they said yes. Yep, and and um and Star Wars Ahsoka has started filming. Um, and I'm I'm excited. I don't know about Ahsoka that. very well. A little, just uh, a little bit from the chit chat, but I don't watch the cartoons. So I, I, well, there was, um, I had done a couple overnight editing gigs, um, in this past, in the, during, you know, at the height of the pandemic where there were, where some, some shows and stuff that were set, uh, or, you know, some, some conferences and stuff that were on British standard time. And uh, so I was staying up all night. And so as I was editing stuff or while I was waiting for files or waiting for files to render, I just would, I watched the, I watched a lot of the Clone Wars series. Um, uh, Uh, That's uh, where she's really is the big star, right? Yes. And she, and the character is really great. And so then when we uh, see her again in, um, in the Mandalorian, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, Rosario Dawson playing her. It's really fun um and and i'm i'm excited to see what they do with that and, and uh, uh, what's the other one that's imminent the the one with uh what's his face from rogue one um yes the um uh, his, the name of the character i believe they're called yeah andor. 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 And, andor andor yeah diego diego Luna. Luna. um yeah and we have you know we have 
a Lando series is in the works. We have, and then we have some other like stuff that uh, one that's going to focus on droids, one that's going to focus uh, one uh, the, the acolyte, you know, which is going to be all you know, uh, a dark side of the force stuff. Rangers of the New Republic, which I want to say has been shelved, but I think that might you know still have life. Rogue uh, one or Rogue Rogue, rogue squadron. squadron. Yep. Um, so we have all of these things in the pipeline that that you know that hopefully they'll all be great the star wars universe is a fun universe i mean and they're not all going to be great they have a movie problem you know yeah the star wars really does work best on the big screen and in a two hour and 10 minute chunk Mm -hmm. and they're they've not nailed that yet and it's that's annoying (laughs) yeah but you know if these series can be the best of event series on tv then it's hard to complain too much while we're waiting for them to solve that because uh, to be fair, that's a that's a that's a tough nut to crack. It really is hard. They had yeah. all they had everything in those Abrams films, and they had all the old legacy characters, everything you could want. They still just they just kind of effed them all up. And and I mean, they didn't make bad movies that were hard to sit through, but they made movies that feel, in retrospect, very very disposable, even compared to certain Mandalorian episodes. And that's that's what happens when you try and make something for everything that's why this sort of cinema is difficult it really is because how do you put your own stamp on something that it has to appeal to everybody or you can't justify the 400 million dollar budget it's tough but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but here's a few more of things along those lines that are coming up yeah yeah i mean do you have anything i I mean we have uh, in terms of series we have a tv series coming up house of dragons uh you know well i'll do house of dragons and because they're coming out at the same time and um the the, uh rings of power together because i i'm because i'm such a this is the way and one of the ways Oh, geez, man. One of the many ways in which I'm steeped in ridiculous geekdom is that I really, (laughs) really know a lot (laughs) about what's going to happen in House of Dragons and what's going to happen in, and I think even more so I know, I think it's me and like Stephen Colbert and, and, (laughs) and like a a couple dozen Tolkien scholars who really can just see an image of something from that world and mm-hmm. go that's that and just know right away oh my god they're going to be talking about that and just get super, mm-hmm. super excited so i felt like that with wheel of time and then uh they they managed to uh just kind of go you go oh they're gonna do that oh that's so great and then when you watch it they do it and you're like mm. oh okay wheel of time's problematic because people are super into it and if you're a fantasy writer it's really really good but it isn't that good compared to the great fantasy stories of the world it doesn't rise to that level at all and it it suffers from that let's just do it forever like he just really never had an end game in mind or if he did right he skipped over it for the money and now you've got this big bloated thing that's like it's Mm -hmm. impossible to imagine them getting anywhere into that series but that but you're right the series isn't bad though it's it is sort of wheel of time in the way like a tv show would have to be and it looks great that's good 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 actors and such but Mm -hmm. i'm sorry just it's that's just not it it does not rise to the level of martin and it comes nowhere close to the level of tolkien it just doesn't and how could it? It's not really yeah. fair. But a lot of people do treat it like, oh, it's that. And sure. I think I think when a when some billionaire someplace decided, oh, I'm going to spend trillions of dollars on that, the thought was it was going to be that kind of property. And it, I'm sorry, but it just isn't. So right. But that's that's nothing against Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time is yeah, what it and is. we'll you know, and we'll we, see. I hope that- we get more. I hope we get more, and maybe they'll they'll you know they teased us with what uh what the what the next series will be um with it and that uh you know maybe they'll find that maybe they'll find their legs i think that you know there was a tone problem with the with the first series of it so let's let's uh, you know obviously i'll watch it i, I I'm, I'm a sucker for it but let's talk house of dragons and, house of dragons uh, real and quick because we'll and, get a get our chance to talk about oh, yeah, that yeah, a yeah. lot i'm sure but house of dragons real quick the thing that's fun about that trailer is is it is sort of it is stodgy when you spend too much time with the Targaryens, especially the Targaryens of old who were in power. It's 
heavy and they're from old Valyria and they're just these mm -hmm. very serious and somewhat dour people. But when you see, especially uh, just, they only, they, you, I don't think they even let her talk in the trailer, but the shot of um, uh, what's her face from um, Olivia from, there's so many Olivia's now of her generation. <laughs> Olivia Cook. Up. This is Olivia Cook. Sorry, thank you. Yes, Olivia Cook. There, you know what I mean? There's a lot of them. There really are a lot of them, and they're all pretty great, actually. <laughs> um, but Olivia Cook, oh, who I really think is great, and seeing her with that dagger, that story dagger that traveled all over the place in Game of Thrones, um, as Alicent Hightower, like, coming to and kill somebody it was really exciting like those are the sorts of things where it's like even it's really exciting if you don't know what the hell's happening if you do mm -hmm. it's just it pushes your buttons you know the it, I, that should be good it should be really good i know people are like i don't want more throne more game of thrones and this if this series has a pitfall because they were trying different things and the only thing that really took off was Let's jump back 200 years and do more Game of Thrones. That's the project that actually happened. And it really is very similar to, in look and style. And even in the timeline of the universe, you mm -hmm. know, it's years and years beforehand, but it's not that many years and years beforehand. The houses, the way the kingdom's divided up, all that stuff is the same. Religion is changing in the world, but it's going to feel very similar. But maybe that's... Maybe that safe bet that they took is isn't so bad. Maybe that you know because it really is compelling stuff. The the Targaryen civil war, uh, the dragon starting to die off, and the desperation that that causes. It, it's all very very exciting stuff. Yeah. So I, I think people are going to like that. I hope so anyway. And Rings of Power, which they've barely shown us anything, but yeah. I, I just can't tell you because that i just can't tell you how much cool stuff they get to cover the mm -hmm. weird rule when they agreed to do rings of power was they they the the prequel if you will or the big historical compendium to the lord of the rings you know middle earth universe is called the silmarillion and the guys who have the rights to this do not have the rights to the silmarillion and the tolkien estate would not sell them the rights to Silmarillion so you couldn't just and Silmarillion is a hard read because it's a, it's a historical tome it's not an adventure you know like the other things are um but but what they were able to do is anything that was mentioned in the Hobbit books or the Lord of the Rings books which they already wrote even if it was just mentioned in passing even if it was just something on the shelf when Gandalf was walking by to get something else. Yeah, if yeah. You, you could take that, that you could talk about in your story. And it, that's a challenge for them to, but they, what they realized was, boy, there's a lot of, there really is a lot of stuff that we're open mm -hmm. to here. And, and I just think, unlike a House of Dragons, which I think, even though you're going back to a time when the Seven Kingdoms were full and at the height of the Targaryen dynasty and such, um, that's what the, the the rings of power is going to be as well but i think that's going to just take people uh, i think that's just going to sweep them away seeing the all the minds of the realm with the dwarves like you know as this powerful race of people um the elves who are not leaving and going away and you can have it uh mm -hmm. they're building cities and they're innovating i mean it's just really really exciting and yet something and yet there's a, and this is the part you should be the most excited about there's a new character female character who's tasked with investigating some strange goings on and even though i think we know what that stuff is i think you'll be i think if you don't really know about the lord of gifts and how the rings were forged and all that i think you just you're in for a stunning ride if that show does that correctly certainly all the resources in the world have been right. dumped on it and i that that work is so rife with potential for adventure and the writers when to hear them talk about their approach and what they're yeah. excited about it will 
which should excite any Tolkien fan. If you, it, I mean, yeah, it, or any fan of high fantasy in general. Yeah, you know? I mean, well, you know, these, the, uh, you know, George R. R. Martin, uh, you know, he obviously uh, heavily influenced uh, by Tolkien and everything. But, but these writers uh, like Tolkien, like Robert Jordan, Wheel of the Time, and all that. I mean, this was good fan. We've talked about this before. Really good fantasy spends time. And uh, and is very um, exact about its world building, and this is where we kind of get a payoff on that. Is um, we get this, you know, we get this world. I mean, it's kind of kind of ties back to Obi Wan and some of these other series that we're you know, good fantasy. Uh, create, you know, it has a creates a living breathing world that then you can explore and say okay well here are the sort of the the givens of a world or of a universe what stories are there within that that you know like you said that oh hey they make a reference to this this thing what if we explore that you know and and we get a little bit of that in the star wars universe too with many bothans died trying to get us this information and then we get rogue one out of it um but this is this is world building at a whole nother level with uh tolkien sort of and, rogue one and, didn't have to do with the bothans but well you, but you know uh um but i'm following no you. that yeah <laughs> uh sorry not bothan uh no yeah, sorry it, that was that geek, was return of the jedi sorry that was my return inner of the geek jedi. couldn't let that slide nope. i conflated i conflated <laughs> mon mothma hey, two, with no uh, two very very important missions about two same death stars or whatever that was sort of nope. a misstep but i get what you're saying i'm nope, sorry, sorry i i know I, I, I conflated the two uh i conflated the two uh spy it's it's, no, it's it's but, um, a couple yeah. sentences in the rogue one is a couple sentences in the opening scroll of Star right Wars, that's the it first yeah. movie yeah, that's all it thank is. You. That's yeah, and that's all just, it is. They just show you that. And they went, okay, so we have their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. And uh and there are they they're it's they've been decanonized, but if you want to learn more about the Boffins, man, the stories are out there. Those um, furry face, sneaky little bastards. They <laughs> uh they we have them to thank for freedom in the galaxy. Of course, there it is. then all the same things happen again, because that's right. what happens when you want to make J.J. Abrams says that's what happens in the world, but that's what happens when you want to make trillions of dollars and not come up with an original idea on your own. Right. And you're, yeah, yeah, there's, that's a different show. Um, but um, so, yeah, and then, so we have, you know, we have these exciting series coming out. We also have some, you know, the continuations of, um, of some pretty big franchises um, with, uh thor love and thunder and the with the marvel universe continuing and we have is thor fun. thor's coming out soon right july or something yep july yeah so we have and what's after our, that what's the big thing we're building to or are, are we not building to anything we don't in the there, well in the mcu there isn't really uh it's not known what the next big thing i mean the 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 the, the big thing is it, it will be some sort of avengers like uh event but i mean we have we have, uh, I believe, right before Love and Thunder, I think we get the uh, Miss Marvel series on Disney sure. before, uh, and we, we meet, apparently, I have not seen it yet, but we meet. Already um, blow back on Miss Marvel for not doing her big hands and big whatever. Big great. Tongue. Um, but we uh, get, <laughs> yeah, we get, um, uh, we meet her in Multiverse uh, of Madness. She gets a series, then we'll get Thor, Love and Thunder. Um but we um but yeah Miss marvel's fun that's a character i like because she she is yeah she is this sort of and then we'll get we got a lot of interesting powers and stuff but she's like this sort of weird wannabe which is not a place we've spent much i think in the mcu yep. not and much and we we'll get uh and we got uh the next um what's the next big movie after thor probably uh guardians of the galaxy maybe is that due out yet this year or is um, that... I'm, I'm trying to find these i'm trying to find these things right now damn it joel i want mcu answers uh, i know and i'm I know. willing to tap a couple of things on my phone so. <laughs> um, uh, i don't really care man i'm just trying to you know, mcu stuff's happening guardians yeah it's been a long uh, guardians of the galaxy day. Um, so, but we have, uh, let's see what's coming up here. We have, uh, you know, we just had Moon Knight, Doctor Strange. Eternals um, parts. 
two through seven. I know. Yeah, I we'll see what. That. Yeah, um, boy. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find some. Uh, but there's some guardians in the Thor movie, right? Those are well, linked. briefly. Yeah, briefly. They they because when we last saw Thor, um, he was with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks like they he gets dropped off um because he's he's done with his fighting but of course you're never done with your fighting um and uh yeah so um let's see marvel movies coming out oh let's see oh we have we have let's see wakanda forever is in uh production uh craven the hunter um i think the next big uh guardians three uh ant-man and the wasp quantum mania is set for 2023 um the marvels so it looks like we're gonna get um uh you know miss marvel we, there there will be this let's see yeah kind of forever is scheduled to come out later this year quantum mania early later 2023. this year yeah that's what it says okay well that's a big, that's uh, a big that's, one. let's see when we find I, let me before i said let's find out yeah this was updated four days ago so a, uh a Black and the Panther Loss. wakanda movie is a huge creative challenge mm-hmm. that'll be really interesting to see so guardians of the galaxy 3 is gonna be is will start the the summer uh, fe- okay, quantum we don't mania. Go all the way to yeah. next summer. I Marvel's, wanted to know what was coming oh, out then, before the end of the year because I figured there has to be something. On yeah, there, so it's Thor, and then uh, the next one, uh, November eleventh, should be Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. So we'll nice. we'll see we'll see what what that does, and then we'll get over the winter. We'll get the Ant Man and the Wasp. Um, so yeah, so I mean that the the Marvel Cinematic Universe still churning along. We'll see what we get TV series wide. Um, that that ties into those things uh, but we did get our first look at the finally the long-awaited somewhat anticipated spoiler uh, alert for St- dr strange right is that what you're about to do spoil a little bit of it no i was gonna get no i was gonna talk about well the trailer that appears before oh, um sure. before, before dr Thor, strange yeah. um is uh is avatar um, oh yeah a- avatar water world i want to say um <laughs> <laughs> the way of water help. when i typed up the outline i just made no. up these titles because i didn't avatar the way of water uh right. so we have um yes yeah, so we have we're finally going back into that world uh, some people are going bonkers over that trailer I, they are i don't Okay. It bodes, bodes well for Avatar that they are because it's when so... I watched it, I was like, "Oh wow!" But at the same time, it's like, "Geez!" Although it's just a teaser, it's a, it's a, not even a trailer. It's it really doesn't show you a lot or even give you much of the premise. But it, I did have that reaction of, "Oh, there's one of those creatures," and "Oh, look, there's one of those t- kinds of helicopters." Like I saw mm-hmm. the shit that we've already seen before, and the problem with. Avatar is from a world building standpoint, there's tons of details. Like they've really thought about how all the plants work, everything. Like they've really, all yeah. the tech in it, everything has been engineered or, you know, created from the ground up, which is why they wanted to do more stories. But the story for Avatar, and I was very defensive of it at the time, but the story for Avatar is the same as Fern Gully and it's the same as Dances with Wolves and it's the same as every jungle adventure you've ever seen on purpose it's a it's an archetypal story Mm -hmm. but you can't just keep doing that same story anymore you need a story element that takes you somewhere at minimum you need uh you know pirates of the caribbean sequels like thing that gets us going someplace else from a plot point and i I, the teaser it it doesn't want to reveal that to us but i don't even see evidence of that at all It really does. This movie can't be the people are coming back with more stuff and we have to fight them again. If that's all it is, we're in trouble. That's what we're told it is. That's what's being said right now. And it's just like, what? That's that's, That's not enough. No. Uh, Because visually, visually dazzling. You know, I mean, it really does look amazing, but it's. And and is that, you know, but that's. (laughs) <laughs> you can't you can't you know you can't just hang your hat on that like see this because you're not going to believe what you see and it's like okay look at that that's great wow look at the detail on that, that cgi a decade of of giant massive cg 
motion capture, you know, you just, you got to, that's fine, but you, you, the story has to land, you know? Yeah. J James Cameron's a really gifted filmmaker and his stories, you know, are, are whatever they are, but none of them are as sort of simplistic bedtime story as Avatar is. And it just, you mm -hmm. have to, although, you know, his Terminator sequel is incredible. It literally is just do the same movie again, but just change these things. And now it's awesome. Yeah. I, I, you know, so he, aliens is kind of the same too so he could do it but yeah, yeah aliens we'll yeah, aliens is like the first movie but what if we add more aliens what if we that that s did all the work that did, really did yeah it did uh it, it yeah it was, all i'm saying yeah. is it from a sequel standpoint he, he's got it in space yeah. he really does know how to do them as good or better than really anyone who's ever done them so right I'll, i'm still giving the guy the benefit of the doubt but i just right we well, want to saw, believe that he's still I saw great... entirely repeated themes and motifs and visuals from what we saw all those years ago and and the mcu and these long form game of thrones has been part of it these other things we're talking about they have uh you can argue with this bit or that bit and you can be disappointed with this episode or that movie but in the end they've created this ongoing constant like feed directly into your brain of narrative 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 all the yeah. time mm -hmm. and it's going to be tough to take a step back into a simpler archetypal storytelling i just think that's really going to be tough i don't yeah. think that will be enough for a, the type of fandom that needs to drive a big expensive property like this but we'll see right um yeah, so it'll be very interesting. All right, uh, on air production meeting, um, we uh, do we want to talk about the streaming model or do we want to jump into trends? <laughs> well, I had a, the big the big heart of the show is going to be let's talk about all this stuff. Like, let's mm -hmm. talk about all this stuff and what this stuff is doing to cinema and what it even though we just hyped a bunch of it up because we're just nerds like everyone else. We just want to see, right. you know, we just want to see whatever. Uh, yeah. Man, well, let's, we just want to see what the new Fantastic Four is going to look like. You know, we're, we all have that in us for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I watched a movie before I did the show today. It's called uh, Three Monkeys. It's a Turkish movie. Uh, actually, my boss gave it to me. So if you if you don't have a cool boss that gives you awesome movies to watch, then, <laughs> then at least in one way in this godforsaken world, I have one up on you. Um, it's by filmmaker. I got it sitting right here. Sorry, sorry everybody. Nuri Bilga, uh, silent <laughs> Turkish guy. Sorry, that's, I butchered that name. Um, and uh, and it, it's from a few years back now it's 12 years old ish 14 years old something but it's a modern ish you know in the 2000s sort of movie um and all i can say after watching that is i really i almost recommend you don't watch good movies because this that movie was so lyrical and so cinematic and so visually stunning and so quietly sad and intimate and so desperately human in a way that all this crap we're talking about, like just can't, it doesn't even approach anything resembling something that reflects the pain in our world. And even you can try and do it with metaphor and you can try and do it thematically, but none of these giant escapist tales, they're all just big bloated expensive turds compared to an actual powerful story about a family or a person. Mm -hmm. I just, and I was reminded of that. I, I didn't do that on purpose. I just have to give this back to him at some point. Um, it, so when we talk about the future of cinema, what we're talking about are these giant properties and these huge, you know, everybody's looking for the next big streaming thing that drives an entire streaming platform. So when I talk about the cracks in the streaming platform, it's not that streaming is not the thing. It is. It's the... The, it's that all these corporations have hoarded all these little things and everything that they've begun is meant to go on forever and keep earning them jillions of dollars. And it has that sort of, uh, 
financial and and long term ambition to it all, and what you're just not getting. Occasionally, you do get one, uh, right? Coda won the Oscar for Best Picture, so it's not like it doesn't happen sometimes. But even Coda, which is a wonderful human story, is made somewhat like a television show. It's not a terribly cinematic thing like the way something like Power of the Dog is, which everybody watched because it had a big movie star in it and, and, and most people hated because it just didn't entertain you in any sort of way that a thing that you're used to, things just desperately clawing over each other to entertain you and dazzle you. And and that's sad. These, these things, I say it and you feel it, but it's hard to articulate why. But the, these things are at odds with each other directly in a way the need for content 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 means that these subtle stories are still getting told so they're out there there may be even more of them out there than ever that, that part is true and i'm grateful for it but but it's it's what's driving that even isn't it's not coming from a place of you're you're a magician you're an auteur you're an artist who has something to tell us about the world. You've written this thing. We can apply a budget to it, but we believe in the thing itself. That's not happening mm -hmm. when everybody just wants to own everything. And everybody, like the Terminator sequels, like deliberately spelling things weird just so they can own the name of the sequel. Like that, that approach to storytelling yep. is absolutely taking its toll out there. Mm -hmm. without a doubt and it is it's it is even me it is it's it's closing my mind off to 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 other things and to things that confront the horrors of life a little bit if not more directly than that at least it just acknowledge them the world that we live in which i don't think are our fantasy epics even the ones that take place in present day frankly uh, even uh, are, are sort of deliberately ignoring yep. those things. Yep. And I don't think it's helping us. We talked a little bit about a movie before. I'm not even going to name it, but because it was one of those ones I, I used my veto power on, but I get the appeal. I get the childlike appeal to this thing that I'm not going to mm -hmm. name, but the human aspect of those stories literally are training us to not care about each other. Right. And I find that just really distressful because when I find myself really caring about people and occasionally really caring about people like us in the world, you know, that, that aren't from a different planet or aren't part of the ruling class of a feudal society or aren't some super being, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it, it's powerful and it is being lost to a, a large degree and more, you know, and, and then just on a base level, even when somebody makes like Tarantino made a hateful eight and it, the details have come out, this was sort of a rumor that was going around at the time. But I, don't, I don't remember what came out at the same time as hateful eight was it force awakens. It's not important. It was one of the star Wars movies and mm -hmm. hateful eight had this was a shot in 70 millimeter so it was, it had this big, the arc like sort of Cinerama screen reserved for, to play at least a month uh, during the holidays when one of these uh, Star Wars films came out. And Disney sent a letter to Arclight and said, you have to book us for a minimum this amount of time or whatever. And they wrote a letter back saying, well, we, we've made a commitment to this other thing. Mm hmm that we want to stand by. And they said, well, then we're pulling all Star Wars from all our white theaters nationwide. Yeah, it was Force Awakens. Yeah. It was Force Awakens. I mean, that's the other evil that's going on behind the scenes of some mm -hmm. of this stuff that I, I, we don't all want to be in, inside, you know, uh, industry insiders or whatever. I'm certainly not there. And not like Tarantino. It's not like it really matters to him. His movie cost $79 million too. Was that what, you know, it's not like that was some poor indie that got trampled by Disney. That's not really the case. Yeah. But, yeah. but it was something different. Even on a large scale, it was something different that, that, that 
somehow some corporate person, some place and some tower somewhere was threatened enough by its being the exception to this broad distribution deal. Um, it, it, the, the more the people making the content control the what's in the theater when, they already control it almost entirely. But if they're really able to say, no, our thing, or or you don't get to show any of the types of movies that make money. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I mean, wonder... that was years ago, but that's really, really bad news if you read between the lines of that story. I sort of feel like, I wonder if the future of brick and mortar movie theaters will be studio based and we'll get a Disney movie theater that will only play that's how it Disney used to be. properties and we'll get a yeah we'll get a it's, it's how uh, it used to be but movie theaters are a bad investment so, yeah yeah many, that's the thing many mall leases are are not good like there's we a just, lot yeah we just lost our movie theater yeah. we just lost our big movie theater here in uh grove yeah. Yeah. and it's a bad gamble from disney's point of view too because they don't know if their people are going to keep coming to see their movies i think deep down they think they probably aren't I think yeah. they think they'll be the last ones to go, but I don't think they see themselves as Joel, the future of cinema. I really don't. Right. I think it's let's gobble up as much as we can. Let's do as much stock buybacks as we can. It's just like any bank or any other terrible corporation. It's, yeah, it's any it's, oil it's, company. They're all thinking with the same minds. Let's mm-hmm. do all this stuff to keep control, to keep the money coming in. Uh, the difference is where's the, where are we seeing the growth? And for the first time with Netflix in particular, but this is going to, everyone else is going to follow suit. Yeah, yeah. You're seeing growth decrease and you're seeing, and even though they rule the earth and are extremely profitable, you're seeing the the stockholders, which is all that matters to a corporation, freaking out. You're seeing the stock go down. And that's, what does that mean for us on the movie show with Joel and Ryan? It just means the movies are... It, for the movie companies are the third ish fourth yeah. sometimes but typically I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say third most concern on their plate at any given time yeah and that's we're feeding that we're feeding that and right. we're not we're not enough anyway f- uh, feeding other, other things in us there are our willingness to be challenged by different things right um, we need we, to get back to that somehow. You need to get back to the point where you can sit through. Uh, Power of the Dog's a great example. It really is the best example from last year, where you can sit through that, and even though it made you feel bad, it you did you didn't just immediately go online and dismiss it and warn everybody else not to watch it. That's yeah, that's yeah. bad. Beha- that's bad behavior from somebody who purports to support art in any sort of way. Yeah, we're. I mean, I, I, not everybody's going to like it. I get it. Yeah, And I liked it, so I'm defending it. So I'm biased. All of this is subjective. But but it, that, it's that sort of thing where it's like, what? Huh? Well, then it must be stupid or it must be wrong or it must have plot holes. Our defensiveness against something not just sending us to the stars every time we watch it. We got to right. we got to lose that. And if you're a brave enough person to try something new and you don't like it, try and try and ask yourself before you start spazzing out mm-hmm. what is it Why? i mean yeah, what and- was it trying to do and what did it do to me and even if i don't like it you know am yeah. i <laughs> should i be so quick to dismiss it the way i would say dismiss all of the friday the 13th movies correct perhaps um, you should not right. perhaps it perhaps it has artistic merit beyond those things there is that, and and maybe uh, I'm I'm sure maybe at some point Michael, a uh, good friend of the show, Michael Klub, will try to uh, tell us why. Well, he's um, a horror fan. Him. I watch tons of sci-fi yeah. movies; are bad. But I last week just to defend myself again, when he's not here to argue with me, last week I put a forward a good science fiction movie, maybe not a great one, but a good one, and yeah. to go back and watch it and go, the sets aren't that great. It's like they're trying to show you what life is like in outer space. I mean, it's not perfect. You know, right. you've been spoiled and <laughs> you like a giant mountain of crap that reaches to the heavens. 
So have a little <laughs> sympathy is basically my my guttural emotional reaction. Right. right? Yeah. Because his because his criticisms were all fair and pretty much on point mm-hmm. as far as mm-hmm. their their content. But yep. come yep. on, we love movies here. <laughs> Watch right. the movie for what it is and tr- at least try and love it. Well, yeah, and and you know where where we are heading is we are going to continue to celebrate the small movie that somehow breaks through the din. Of uh, and, and this noise breaks through the noise of all of these giant uh, shared universe approach to intellectual property, you know, where everything is tied to another thing. And this is a thing that was offshoot of this thing and it's all connected and we're going to do this and there, yeah. and we're going to still celebrate. We're going to celebrate those small movies and say, see arts happening. And yet, uh, and yet, the model is still to create the noise. Well, and and art is happening. It's happening as a byproduct of, of, of people of, of timing of Netflix wanting to put out a a new film every week. Um, They need content. And so they need smaller content. It's, 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 it's the same people bringing along the festival films now as are making the giant IP products. And that is damaging and troubling. It is not to date affecting people who make small films, certainly not small Turkish films. I'll watch every one of this guy's films because I was, I was pulled over by it. I mean, and it's not the greatest movie ever. So three monkeys is not like you need to watch this, but you know, this guy, the person who recommended it to me, he, he knew me enough and my taste enough to know, Oh, I know one this, you like. Yeah, and it, this was, is yeah. He here's right, a, here's a movie right that's trying range. to say something. Yeah, here's a movie that's trying to say something. It's it's a different perspective. It's a different it's, thing. What it and, is and, is yeah. it's letting it. What it does brilliantly is it lets life happen. It lets people happen. That sure. is not part of our storytelling. Our storytelling is absurdly even your best Netflix show or your best serialized thing is it's absurdly manipulative. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And, and and there's that's a problem as well it's just it really wants you to do none of the work that's not to say you can't have an emotional reaction to like when uh tom holland disappears as spider-man like that's that works that's emotional that's that's good storytelling you know i remember uh you know he takes a little longer to disappear than the rest and he's he's got his his mentor mm-hmm. holding his hand desperately not wanting him to go like that's great that's great stuff yeah. but but it it it's super it's 100% manipulative it, it it requires nothing of you it requires nothing of you because you yep. love both of those people because you admire them because they're the heroes of the movies it's just tricky um, um we got time get a get, let's get some trends in here so we can have a little fun Okay, real quick, talking about something that that just because you mentioned this Turkish movie that was really cool. Last night I finished season one of Severance um, on Apple TV Plus, and uh, you I mean it, it? Ben Stiller, you know, it's a Ben Stiller directed thing. It, uh, it tremendous, tremendous storytelling. I cannot recommend. It's bizarre. It's it's weird. It's I I like yeah. I loved Severance. Uh, it was challenging and uh icky and wonderful and funny and it was all sort of all of the good things um all right let's uh let's take a look at a couple of and it's been renewed for the next five seasons has it really it's it was big for uh, apple which we kind of give credit for being as big as these other streaming companies anywhere near as big as them um for apple it was very very successful yes yeah yeah Yeah, you'll get more uh, of that well and it and it had a ha, just a terrific uh conclusion. final up yeah conclusion yeah. for the final episode. Um all right, here's a couple let's talk a little bit a couple trends maybe. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Sell sell sell. Bye bye. Sell, sell, sell. Bye bye bye. This is a you big victory it. for me. This is a big victory for me, listener. 
dear listener, this oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna be rolling on this for the next for the next week. That's gonna keep you warm I at did night. Not for... screw that up. Nice. I did not come in early. I almost did like on purpose, but I needed to have the win in order to do. Yeah, then it'll, then when you f it up on purpose later, you'll you it'll be, you'll at least have proved. I can do it, you know. Yeah, you got to know the rules before you can break them. Screenwriting one hundred and one. That's true. All right. Okay. Here we go. To your Jamie and Trent Trucker. Uh, all right. Um, long form whodunits. That's all the tickertainment Trent Trucker was at. Long form whodunits. No longer are we getting, uh, especially TV series, um, where for a while there it looked like we were going to have a sort of a a hybrid. Um, you know, like a, a season long arc, but then every episode would could still be a self-contained thing. Uh, we are doing now it is a, a full season of a show that you have to, you know, if you didn't watch the episode before it, you will be lost. Um, are you are you bullish or bearish on that? Bye, bye, bye. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, because um, I mean everything comes at a cost. Okay. Yeah. So you, I lament greatly of the mystery movie being just kaput as in terms of something that penetrates um, the masses the way it used to back in the old days. I, I that makes me sad. Those are yeah, that, gone that because is they're a... subtle, subtle films and or subtler films. I don't know. It's not like murder mysteries with a detective or whatever back in the day mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. were you know subtle necessarily they were the big movies of the day not that long ago not ancient history that, that's a bear market yeah so that's sad but the the good thing is that there is absolutely still a market for it it is in this different setting and certainly like uh what's the kate winslet one on hbo we'll just use that as a mayor mayor uh mayor of east town um yeah, i think that's right east town um uh, but, but there's oh, Joel's right. There's dozens of these, and some of them are some of them are harsher and more culturally sort of relevant than they are. And some of them are very old school, where it really is just the tortured, brilliant detective. Like uh, Wallander is great. That, that's uh, was a trendsetter in this sort of storytelling. In fact, um, but I, I love it because they are like murder mysteries. And one thing that the movie struggled with was, you know, when you're reading a murder mystery, maybe it's in first person, maybe it's whatever it is there's a room for the character to matter in, in where in a movie that you, you, you hope you pull off the essence of the character, but you really, there's no room for them to breathe. They are what they're chasing. And, and the, the greatest thing about the long form mystery series is that, that you get, you really do get both. And it shouldn't be at this point a burden for anybody to have to watch something that's serialized and yet there's something really great about um these mysteries when they solve themselves or when they resolve themselves yeah you can have all these different novels with the same star same lead same detective whatever but they really do have a resolution that even something like uh what's that great show with elliot page that's on netflix uh, the Umbrella Academy. Umbrella Academy. Well, that's mm-hmm. fun. Well, that's that's fun. But that really, that show really does feel like it really feels like it slams on the brakes when it's about to resolve anything because it just wants to keep eating its own tail mm-hmm. for infinity. Mm-hmm. And that's not bad. That's TV. It does that. But you can't just jump into Umbrella Academy <laughs> any damn place you please. So sure. even the shows that aren't these self-contained things, they're actually they're still serialized and they're not, they don't even have the benefit of being self-contained. So I love it. I mean, I'm buying all the way on that. And I hope Mm -hmm. that, I hope that those continue to be successful. No doubt. Uh, Just real quick, uh, a a murder mystery series that I loved and it made, it was, I believe initially developed for, I think maybe Quibi. Remember when Quibi was going to be the, 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 um, but, uh, Paul Appel um, in the Mapleworth Murders. Uh, it's a it's a takeoff on uh, Murder She Wrote sort of thing, um, and they're insanely funny. Paul Appel, John Lutz, JB Smooth, um, really really funny. I believe it's available on the Roku channel. Mm. Um, so now, that's all but... I need is another effing channel. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, they're they're really super short. They're really 
really funny. Um, all right, here we go. Let me check another thing here. Uh, check Jamie. Uh, all right. Okay. What do you mean? Oh, closure. Okay, so because initially Ticker Tam and Trent Tracker just said closure. And I'm like, what does that mean? And then it came up with um, movie series, all movies, movie series, um, and, and television series. Everything has to have closure. Everything is being tied up in a nice little bow. Um, and not everything uh, does everything, do all these series need to have closure? Uh, so I don't know if that's a... I'm not that's... sure Ticker Tame and Tracker. Now, don't get mad at me when the, mm -hmm. when we piss off the Ticker Tame and Tracker. Bad things happen in the movie show. Yeah. But but I'm not sure I agree with the premise, so it's hard to know whether I'm bought, quote, buying or selling on this. Mm. Perhaps this is would have been a better... Uh, what's the one where we're like, true or false? <laughs> hot Well, hot takes? Yeah, hot takes. Maybe that's, hot more takes. Of a hot, yeah. maybe that's more of a hot take that I disagree with, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, hell, hey. Okay. It's, I'm not buying or selling on either thing. You, you don't want to ever be, I mean, I, I, it sounds like the Tickertainment Tracker is saying everything needs closure now, and that's bad. And it isn't bad. I think and it's just, I think it's just the closure. trend. I think it's just the trend is, is everything is getting proper closure. Well, uh, right. And closure is a term, is a modern psychology term that our generation and definitely uh, future generations really embrace. Um, so you want that feeling. But like I just was demonstrating, nothing really ever ends with these things until it ends. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and it, closure is hard to actually achieve emotionally. Right. Right. And, but narratively, we do not even, I don't even see people even really striving for that i do i think the i think the the trend is to keep as many flaming chainsaws in the air as you possibly can and that's just it's that doesn't provide closure even right. if you have the freeze frame at the end of the final episode or whatever where everyone's laughing you it ask yourself of what yeah exactly what, what are you really getting <laughs> that's a that's a that's super closure. I mean, that's the yep. way other end of the spectrum, but what, what are you really getting? I mean, what did right. they really resolve? What is really solved here? And, uh, you know, I don't know. Right. I, I, I remember the, I remember the series. It, it, this was maybe one of my first examples or my first uh, experiences with it. What was that, that the season or the series finale of uh, quantum leap where, uh, spoiler alert the uh the whole thing you, ends spoil up with it? Them. you don't have to spoil it you can say what it was without spoiling it i think uh well they just uh i mean he i guess it's uh, it solved none of the pro we'll just say this it solved, it solved, yeah, it solved none of the none. problems of the show and resolves it, it and fails to resolve the central premise of the thing yeah, and 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 it, it does a whole bunch of other things too. That's a really stunning finale. Yeah. Um. And 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 that was the first time that I really remember going, "What? What?" Oh, and, and then and really having to think about it, and then having to come to grips with that idea of, okay, this was not a this was not a a a, a, a pit, you know, and close the close the book, uh, back end of the book on it. Right, right, um, right. That is, th this is something that uh, is, you know, and, and it is, um, and that was, that was, I remember just being kind of a, a big moment uh, of kind of discovery of, of how I viewed media, how I viewed television and movies and stuff like that of going about, you know, that my, my, my brain, my brain, uh, you know, I, I had the little, as I was watching that quantum leap, there was a big black obelisk standing next to me. And I evolved a little bit, I think, as I was watching, um, was uh, <laughs> Donald Belisario's finest moment, the man yep. who brought you NCIS. I mean, <laughs> what a, what a stunning and brave conclusion to that series. This is, yeah. Uh, and to be fair to Donald, the, the, the final episode of Magnum PI actually is not what you would expect either. Oh, but, I'm not sure I remember But that. I, I, I think just because of the, the nature of what Quantum Leap was, it was a high concept show mm -hmm. and it just went balls to the walls. Babylon 5 with its series finale and it's... it's all right. Uh, but, all right last... uh, but it didn't provide you with emotional closure, you know. That's true. I, yeah. And... And you look at something like Lost, which actually resolves itself better than I think people think, but 
where it really falls down is it spends half of its entire final season desperately trying to give you emotional catharsis. And, and when that stuff starts to fall flat, you really sort of turn against it in its totality. Mm-hmm. And, and like I say, I don't, I, I really don't believe that to be the failure. Everyone says it is because when you, if you took the time to deep dive it, let's say, and you talked about what you've learned and what happened and what's actually going on, it's big stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah. what you look and feel that closure that it doesn't manage really it is the part that stings and it's the part that makes you turn against it. And then you start looking for your plot holes and ranting and railing on the message boards and, and then you end up with the thing gets the reputation that it has. So, yeah. yeah. So I guess ticker chain and in that way, I agree with you from a uh, hot take standpoint. Yeah. They, a, that was smart. They do want think- that. And the reason they want it is because they don't want, the discourse to turn Batman versus Superman on you. And even the corporations are aware enough of that. They don't want that to happen. And the artists working on this level, they don't want that to happen either. So they're mm-hmm. trying to give you emotional closure, if not narrative right. closure. Hey, Ticker Tim and Trend Tracker, can you give us a quick one that we'll have a quick answer to? That'd be great. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Great. All right. Oh, this is good. Um, scripted reality TV where we're getting shows or movies about reality TV. So it's like they're they're like a story of seven kids that are going to be on a reality TV show and blah, blah, you know we're we're seeing some of we're seeing sort of a, going extra meta on that. Are you uh are you are you bearish or bullish on that? Within reason within reason i don't yeah. want that to be i don't want there to be yeah 16 shows going on at any given time that's about that but you know what i mean and i think our our efforts to engage in media trends like something like ed tv remember the ron howard movie with mcconaughey or like oh, yeah. those films when you look at them now they look they're they first of all they was stupid at the time so they didn't make a good movie made right. like truman show is a good movie that looks stupid but but if, but at least it's a good movie, so you can revisit that and and whatever. It, it's still good, um, even if it seems crazy, antiquated, and weird because it's trying to deal with future tech and and storytelling about storytelling, right? So, yeah. sorry, Train Tracker, this isn't a short one. I, 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 am, watch, I am watching the clock, though. Yeah, uh, partner. Um, the the so I like that there was this weird show on uh, ABC or something called Siberia. I watched every episode of it, even though the audience has bailed on the thing after the first episode, but it was, it was literally about these people who went out camping on like a survival style reality show. And, you know, they had a little monolith at the center of their little village that gave them clues and things and stuff that they had to do every day. And you had people playing the game and trying to betray each other and stuff. And then something (laughs) changed like a meteorite fell and reality went to hell. And these people, <laughs> these people still had these sort of personalities where they were competing with each other in a situation where they really needed to be trying needed to save to get- each other. And it's not a really good show because it, 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 unfortunately it's each episode, even the ones after the turn are structured like a reality show. So they, they it just takes too long to get anywhere in the thing. But, but, uh, but I loved it. And and it also has complete lack of closure. It has a total cliffhanger, wait till you see season two ending. Yeah. Which, which was very clear after season three that there were, or after episode two, three, there would be no season no, two. No, season two. Oh but they, God, they go through this journey. They, they're left alone. They're abandoned by the show, by everything. And they got to travel in the really the most dangerous part of the, anywhere on earth. Uh-huh. To get to some semblance of civilization to save themselves, and when they get there, it's completely abandoned, and they go up to the top of this apartment building because it's the only place in the whole city with a light on. Spoiler alert for Siberia! Now you don't have to watch it, <laughs> um, because there's like this light up Christmas tree in the window, and they get up there, and there's nobody there, but the power is on in this unit. And when they come back down, and people at this point, people have lost their lives. Things have gone super haywire. The group has been split in half. Um, and they get down and the host of the show is down on the sidewalk and he sees them and it ends with him going, you're not supposed to be here. 
So it was, what I'm saying is, <laughs> oh, if you, if you could be patient that. with That's it, high concept. It, was, yeah. it was clever, you know? So yeah, you can do that. You can totally do that, but mm-hmm. let's not do that too much, you know? That's not and good even too, like yeah. the offer right now, uh, the make, sort of the making of The Godfather, that's really extraordinary, but too much of this making of stuff and too much of this sort of like the Ryan Murphy sort of biopic stuff with Joan Crawford and stuff like that. Some of that's really good. And some of it's dangerous, especially, especially the crown. Now that the crown is coming into mm-hmm. Modern present day, day mm-hmm. like how do you do that? Really? Those are tricks and, and they make me feel icky. All right. Uh, you- so I don't want too much of that, but, Siberia season two sign my petition <laughs> I, I want I, <laughs> that's a 13 year old show now but I want that back so everybody you know. oh I love it yeah. uh can we answer our fan mail uh, uh in three minutes yep I have a question who gave you the right to play God what the hell's going on out here why do I bother what is the point in doing anything hey! What more do you want from me? I have a question. All right. Uh, Joe Webb, 14 fan. (laughs) An internet legend. An internet legend. Says, hey, Joel and Ryan, long time caller, first time listener. (laughs) Um, Anyway, if someone could tell you the exact moment of your death, would you want to know? It's thematically related to the show, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the future. Um, I'll, I, I can I can answer that real quick. No, I don't want to know. I, I, I don't. I absolutely want to know. Yeah, I. I quick I, explanation, I, Joel. Uh, because I want I I shudder at the fact that um that there's going to be a giant chunk of my son's life that I'm going to miss, and I don't want. You're going to miss know. it anyway. Why wouldn't you want to know? Because I just, I'm trying, yeah, I, do, I don't want to, I, I want to take you wanna, in every you moment maintain, as I can. Usually when people say no, they want to maintain the spontaneity of their own yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. And that each thing is its own thing and happening for its own reason and not because of some predestined point on the map where things stop, right? Oh, shizzle. Yeah. Where me, childless, alone, with little to live for, would love and really, really appreciate having a little time to plan for that event. I really don't mm-hmm. want, I mean, I, I, I don't want to get cancer and suffer. Like I don't want to make light of any of the ways people go out over time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really don't like the idea of like boom, car accident and I got the rug pulled out from under me and just left everything behind unresolved. So, so ticker time and Chan tracker, you were right. I need closure. Maybe there it is. I'm willing. I'm willing to consider changing my mind on that, Joe. Joe Webb, fourteen fan. Maybe because the, maybe the circumstances will change. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. But I understand Joel's circumstances, and those are mine, and they're different. And it 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 gives you. It just shows you how dramatically different your perspectives can be based on that. Based on that oh, other stuff that's surrounding you. Correct. Yeah. Um, all right. Hey, that was great. Um, all right, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. You can reach out to us at ask uh, at the movie show with Joel and Ryan page on Facebook at ask Joel and Ryan on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and um, it's all right. My alarm went off. Uh, and uh, the, we made it. Uh, we did it. Uh, and uh, and if you were watching us on YouTube, like and subscribe, and uh, and and we will be back next week with more fun and shenanigans. Thank you all so much. Bye. See you in the future. Thank you for listening to The Movie Show with Joel and Ryan. Remember, all views and opinions represented in this podcast are personal and belong solely to the speaker and do not represent those people, institutions, or organizations that the speaker may or may not be associated with, unless explicitly stated. None of these views and opinions were intended to malign or deceive. And now, here's the producers, circa 1982, to play us out.
piece, it really does seem long when you have some place to be. 